when a man falls for a woman. When he's persistent. Just won't give up. Gee, if there's one thing this movie has taught us, it never pays to be a bully. You might just pick on the wrong person. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video. Valentine came out back in 2001 and was directed by Jamie Blanks and stars Marley Shelton, Denise Richards, and many others. And it follows the serial killer wearing a Cupid mask that takes revenge on the five women who has wronged him at a junior high Valentine's Day dance years prior. Love hurts, I know. This film was really interesting. I loved the way it was shot. It had all the right ingredients for a Valentine's Day movie slasher film. Rick Boda's cinematography and lighting was done really well. It, it was very slick and glossy feel. Plus it had that dark atmosphere light that a slasher should have. This film dealt with a lot of issues like female empowerment. It's usually the women that are objectified but the men in this was dejectified and the women conquered. The writers of this film definitely made the women the bigger picture of this. It wasn't the guys. It wasn't the men. It was actually the women who overpowered. This was all about the girls. Pure and simple. It was a different take on the whole scenario. This film came out at a very specific time. This was before social media, so you didn't have Tinder... You didn't have Facebook or MySpace or none of that. It did show scenes where they were on their computers, searching around the internet, but the internet was far from being anything at that time like it is now. So it still had that 90s look because this was fresh off the new millennium. It was in 2001, so it was just two years out of the 90s. And about the, uh, in the social media, you didn't have all that stuff, so there was a scene in this film where they had speed dating way they perceived that, I was thinking to myself, people actually did that. That's what this film perceived. So now you have all these dating sites that you didn't have then. So then, that's what they perceived everybody doing. Which was kind of funny. <laughs> but at the same time, more personal. And you actually knew who you were talking to. The thing about online dating now, it's very scary. You don't know who you're talking to. There's a lot of impersonators out there that don't stay true to themselves. You could be thinking that you're talking to one person and then it being somebody completely different. And that's what's scary about nowadays. I thought the character development was done pretty well. You got Kate played by Shelton, who's basically the final girl. She's got that innocence about her, that non-judgmental quality. I think everybody would like a friend like her. So I thought that they did this character justice. Then you got Paige who's the condescending, overbearing sort of, you'd love to hate her. She's snooty, she's full of herself, but she's also strong and very colorful and fun in some scenes. But you just love to hate her at the same time. Oh, and the killer, wow. The first few times when I watched this film, of course, at the time when it came out, I was young, in my young teens, I, I imagine. I was just getting into horror films at the time. And I was so much into, like, fresh into Halloween and Friday the 13th. And when the killer would show up in this film, he would remind me so much of Michael Myers. The way he would walk, the way he would perceive people. And the knife that he used, which was a butcher knife. And that's the same knife that Michael Myers would use. And I know this is kind of blowing it out of proportions, but one might assume that the killer is related to Michael Myers. <laughs> But seriously, he was very menacing. I love the way they depicted the killer in this. 
editing in this film by Steve Murkovich was done really well. It wasn't choppy. It was done just perfectly. And you know, judging by today's standards, the gore in this film was very minimal. Nowadays, people expect more. They want to see more blood, more decapitations, yank an arm off or a leg or whatever. But this film was more psychological than anything else. And I think that's a lot of the problem with people nowadays. Not that I'm bashing movies that shows a lot of that stuff. I'm for it. Not to sound hypocritical or anything, but I mean, I enjoy both. Because I grew up around this time when this film came out. So I can actually relate. Now the problem is I had with this film is kind of mediocre, but I'll throw it out anyway. I really didn't get the whole nose bleeding thing. It showed the kid at the beginning of the film, which doesn't really give that much away, having a nosebleed in the beginning. And I guess I was supposed to mean something, I don't know, but it kept on throughout the film. So whenever the killer would kill somebody, he would actually nosebleed through his mask. And I never really got that. I felt that was kind of unnecessary and I felt like they, they could have like set that aside. Plus, there was this whole thing before the final act happened. They were at the house, and this guy got tied to the bed by one of the characters and just left out the hang. Didn't even mention him throughout the final act anymore. It didn't even show that he got killed or anything. They just left him out in the wind. Whatever. <laughs> and last but not least, the ending was very unsatisfying. You get to find out who the killer is, which... To some people, it might not be that big of a surprise. But the way they handle it, you would have thought that they made a sequel. And if only enough people would have flocked to go see this film in theaters and made enough money, then they would have made a sequel because they left it wide open. There was actually a behind-the-scenes thing. I looked at the Blu-ray here recently where one of the characters, one of the actors, said that the camera behind the scenes... And we will all want to be in the sequel. And I thought that was really sad because that never came to be. And I, what could have been? That's all I'm saying. What could have been? This film, I felt, was very underrated. The critics bashed it so much. But now, I think this film has a cult following. Because it just now got released on Blu-ray by Scream Factory. And then I think people has really grown to it. It's become one of those classics. This movie came out like... 19, 20 years ago. So I think the younger generation nowadays will enjoy this film for what it is. Valentine gets a B plus. I can see why critics kind of would bash it, but at the same time, I don't think it's that bad, y'all. I think it's still watchable. It's still fun. It's a really great slasher flick. There's not too much gore in it. It was more left to the mind. Director Jamie Blanks, who also directed Urban Legend, did the same thing for that film. It was more psychological, and it was just more to the imagination and purity of it. It's a good film. It's a good film, I thought. And anybody who's a fan of this film, pick this up. Whether it's at your local FYE or Best Buy, Walmart, or online like I did. It is definitely worth it. The transformation is just clear as crap. It's awesome. I already looked at a majority of the features of it. It has interviews, commentaries, anything you'd want out of a collector's edition Blu-ray. So just pick this up and trust me, it's worth it. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What did you think of Valentine? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Peace to rip out.